Hello everyone. In the previous lectures, uh, we discussed about one of the topics of Unit 2, uh, that is approaches, uh, techniques and strategies. In that, we saw the constructivist approach to science teaching. We discussed uh, its meaning uh, and we will be discussing the principles and the other aspect that is its relationship to traditional teaching. So, in the first lecture, we saw what constructivism is how people construct their understanding, how constructivism is a theory which describes learning due to construction of knowledge and the famous contributors to constructivism. We also started with uh, discussing some characteristics of constructivism wherein we saw learning depends upon what we already know that is the previous knowledge. New ideas occur as we adopt and change our old ideas. Learning involves inventing ideas rather than mechanically accumulating facts. Meaningful learning occurs through rethinking old ideas and coming to new conclusions about new ideas which conflict with the old ones. And the last point which we discussed in the previous lecture was that learning is influenced by emotions, feelings and attitudes. And we saw how feelings, emotions and attitudes can play a very important role when we uh, talk about learning or when we want learning to occur. So let us go ahead and discuss few more characteristics of constructivism. The next point says that learning involves both focused attention and perception. So when I talk about learning involving both focused attention and perception, what do I mean is in order for us as teachers to make students learn, it's important that we grasp their attention we focus their attention to the concept by using several means uh, or approaches which we can use in order to enable this particular process and also perception. Now, what do I uh, mean by perception? Now, you need to give the students an idea about that concept or you need to develop a perception about that concept in the minds of the students. And that perception should be developed in the right way as they would be looking at the topic even in the future with the help of the perception that they create when they first come across that particular concept or a topic. So it's very important that as teachers we also pay attention to how we can focus our attention to a concept or how we can build about their perception. Next point discusses that learning is influenced by the environment, culture and climate. Very true. Even we as an individual are developed or are developing or based on nature and nurture theory that is the heredity and environment isn't it so learning also is influenced by the environment that we are in the culture that we follow or the climate that we live in so it's very important that we create a very suitable a very conducive environment for the children to learn and understand or a conducive environment wherein they are able to share what they feel or where they have that freedom of sharing their opinions, voicing out their opinion and standing for what they believe in. So if you create such an environment for the students learning, in order for a learning to take place, you don't have to put in much effort but only things, or the only thing that you need to take care of is the environment that you create should be suitable for the learning process which you are planning to enhance. Culture. Now culture is a very uh, important term and we know what culture is. Uh, it's the belief uh, in the ideas or maybe the thinking pattern or it can be related to the dressing. Okay, there are various, uh, it is a multifaceted concept, isn't it? You cannot put culture uh, in only one category. Culture is basically how a person uh, thinks from thinking to dressing to the lifestyle. Everything is put in, a, in an umbrella term of culture. Okay, let us not discuss into detail about the definition of culture, but yes, we all know what, what culture is and how it can play an important role as we have discussed about this in the previous lectures as well. And we have also seen that how culture plays a very important role and how education or how environment uh, is dependent or is culture specific or even how schools or the environment that we create in the school and the classroom can be culture specific. And climate definitely, isn't it? What climate uh, you create in your uh, school, what climate you create in your classroom, again plays a very, very important role uh, in order for learning to occur. 
Next point is learning always involves conscious and unconscious processes. Now, what do I mean by conscious and unconscious processes? Now, when I talk about conscious processes, I mean the efforts that the child put, uh, the child is putting in, or the children are putting in while learning something, okay, or maybe something that they do, uh, which is told they, told uh, told to them to do, or in, in for example, if I take an example of uh, one exercise or one assignment, which I as a teacher has given them. Wherein I have given them certain uh, criterions, okay, following which they have to go about submitting that assignment or creating that particular project, isn't it? So here it involves a conscious involvement of a child. And unconscious processes are those uh, thoughts that we have nurtured or that uh, we have inculcated in the students while we were discussing about that particular concept on which they are doing the assignment. So when I talk about unconscious processes, they are nothing but the nurturing effect that you have uh, provided them with uh, while you are discussing about a given concept. So it's very important that in order for them to learn in a proper way, we do impart them those values or those ideas which they will uh, uh, or which they will register in their mind at conscious and an unconscious level too. So it's very important that we as teachers do do take care of the nurturant and the instructional effects. The instructional effects are something which you can tell directly or which you can see directly. But nurturant effects are those which uh, are not visible. But yes, they make a lot of difference to the child when a child thinks about a particular concept or uh, it is basically the kind of a perception that you create about that concept in a child's mind. So that's how it plays a very important role. Then learning is enhanced by challenge and exhibited by threat. I think this particular statement is self-explanatory and it tells you what exactly learning is. Now in order for learning to happen, we do not have to threaten the child by saying that if you don't do this work, you will not get marks. If you don't do, if you don't do this work, you will be failed in this particular exam. Here you are not challenging the child, rather you are threatening the child which will exhibit or what you call, it will. there will be an exhibition of that learning in that particular child, isn't it? Because if you threaten the child, the child will not be curious to learn. Instead, the child will be under the threat. The child will only think about the threatening statements that you have made to him or her in the classroom or in the school. So it's very important that we learn the difference between providing them a challenging situation and threatening them. So it's important that as teachers, we need to give or provide them with challenging situations which will enhance their learning. This is something which each one of us need to understand because it really takes efforts at the end of the teacher to create a challenging situation, to create something looking at which or uh, performing which they will feel challenged because there will be students in your class uh, with varying level of intelligence, with various uh, liking or maybe with various uh, uh, what you call intelligences. Isn't it? There are various in multiple intelligence theory what we talk about. Each child is good in his or her own uh, way, isn't it? Some children may be good at singing, some may be good at uh, Dancing, others will be good at writing, okay, some are good poets, some are good uh, orators, okay, so there are various qualities that each student possesses. So it's very important, why am I saying that uh, creating a challenging situation is a bit difficult task or it requires effort at the end of the teacher? Because uh, when you will be planning a situation which you would assume would be challenging for the students, you need to take care of all these things. You need to understand the nature of the class, the nature of students that are a part of your class and whether this activity will be like them or will be liked by them or not. So all these things as a teacher you need to take care of. So we need to understand that if you are creating a challenging situation for the students free of threat, then definitely it will enhance learning. Okay, so that was all about 
the characteristics of constructivism uh, i think there are around uh, nine points and each of the, these points are self explanatory and you need to give a thought to it there are various ways by which you can understand it i have tried and put my perspective about each of these points in front of you and if you wish to you can think about each of these points and learn it or understand it in your way by taking some clues from the discussions that we just did or from the previous lectures as well okay so these are some of the characteristics or basically the features of constructivism and it basically uh, a whole idea or the whole process behind constructivism runs in this particular manner okay so a uh, next part of this particular concept is principles of constructivism now when we talk about principles of constructivism principles are nothing but are those statements are those uh, what you call uh, rules on which this particular theory stands on now the first principle says that knowledge is actively constructed by the individual i think we all do agree to this point and we have discussed on this particular point uh, for a long time wherein we said that how knowledge is actively constructed by an individual now in order in order to create knowledge or in order to construct knowledge we have already discussed that you need to be actively engaged in a task or you need to have active involvement from your end in the task otherwise it is very difficult to construct knowledge at your own because constructivism theory believes that knowledge is constructed by the individual knowledge is some, not something which can be imparted by another individual to you or you cannot impart knowledge to someone else it is something that they themselves create isn't it you can only pass on the information but knowledge is something which they have to construct or they have to create and the kind of knowledge the form of knowledge Uh, or the way the information is perceived will be different for different individuals so your knowledge about this particular concept will be different from the person uh, who is sitting next to you isn't it or your classmate or your friend so if you are each of you will have a different knowledge or different schema of this concept of constructivism so i think it is very important for us to know this first principle and i think most of us are aware of it moving ahead Let us see the second principle, which says that learning is both an individual and a social process. It's a very elaborate point, and I think uh, maybe in the next class we can discuss more about this point, which wherein we'll discuss how learning is related to an individual and how a society or how a people around you, how your peers, how your teachers, and how your parents or somebody. more knowledgeable other plays a very important role in the learning process of an individual now we know that learning is an individual process as in as an individual you have all the qualities you have all the powers to learn something on your own provided you are given that enough support isn't it but there are theories which also believes that apart from that information which you need to get need to be provided by somebody else okay along with that a support a support a different kind of a support from another individual whom we call a more knowledgeable other or, or mko plays a very very important role and we shall discuss more about this particular process and this particular point in the next class so till then you can go through the characteristics that we just discussed and see how you understand them or if you have any queries related to the characteristics that we discussed Uh, please uh, write your queries and we can discuss it maybe in the next class thank you